So the goal I have with this series is to try and explain key time series concepts, each one in under five minutes. So let's go ahead and jump on in before I, well, run out of time. <laughs> I know, bad dad joke. If you're looking for more bad dad jokes as well as understanding data science a little bit better, please subscribe below. But what is time series data? Well, basically, time series data is just a set of ordered data values that we observe at successive points in time. I'm typically looking at data as it's evolving over time. Now, that's a little bit different than the typical cross-sectional data set you're probably used to working with, where I really am observing data at a fixed point in time, or really where time doesn't matter at all. In the end, it all boils down, though, to how your data is structured. Most likely, right before modeling, your data looks something like this. You have some indexing variable, as well as a variable of interest, we'll call it y, and a variety of other variables that may influence that variable of interest. We'll call them x1 through xp. In cross-sectional data, this indexing variable is an independent collection of observations. So whether they're independent customers or independent stores or independent cities, you're usually looking at values that each row is independent of itself. And with that being the case, how we observe cross-sectional data and really explore cross-sectional data is based on that assumption that time doesn't matter. So with that being the case, let's look at a histogram of y. I'm really here just looking at how spread out y is, where are the common values of y. That's all I'm really doing. If I want to understand how y is related to one of my x variables, I look at it in a scatter plot. As x goes up, y has a tendency of going up. That displays some kind of slight relationship here. But in time series data, it's a little bit different. This indexing variable is actually time itself, which means there's a dependence there as I'm watching a series evolve. So my y is no longer just an independent collection of observations. It's a collection of successive points. So this data set that you see right here visualized now across time is the exact same data that I showed you in that histogram. And we can see the histogram didn't provide the full picture. How spread out y is may change as time goes on. So how spread out y is at the beginning of this series looks a little different than how spread out y is at the end. You might be even able to make an argument that the mean or the center of y seems to be decreasing slightly over time. So again, that histogram didn't reveal everything. Here, when I'm visualizing time series data, I'm visualizing it evolve over time. And it's the same thing with its relationship with x. I no longer care about just x and y and their respective values. I care about how they're related across time. When x goes up, does y go up across time? Do I see spikes at the same time? Do I see spikes at successive points in time? Maybe if x spikes now, y will spike at the next point. These are the kinds of things we can add when we add time to the aspect of data that we're looking at. But maybe you have something even more. Maybe your data is structured in the way that I like to call the gold standard of data, a transactional data set, where you have both an index across time and an index across observation. Again, imagine like customer transactions. Each customer is an independent collection of dependent time points. So how do you handle data that looks like this? You have choice, <laughs> the thing we all crave. You have the ability to do whatever you'd like. You can take this data and make it cross-sectional. Let's imagine the highlighted rows that you see here are a collection of one customer's transactions. I can aggregate them up to one row. Maybe it's the average amount that they've spent overall. So now I can do this with every customer and I have now independent observations that I created from my transactional data set. I can sum up a customer in one row of data. It's the same idea when it comes to time series. Let's imagine all the highlighted rows you have here are at the same point in time. Let's say January. Well, now I can aggregate those up and see what the average transaction looks like in January. And so now maybe my rows are dependent, but it's just one thing I'm looking at. Let's say average transaction, and I'm looking at how it evolves across time. Of course, you can get absolutely crazy, right? You can take each of these customers and break them out into their own independent data sets. Let's imagine I take customer A, and I'm going to look at how customer A's transactions evolve across time. Well, that may be different than how customer B's transactions evolve across time. So you split them up into different data sets and do different analyses on each one of them. So how to be able to do these analyses is really the main point of the rest of this series. But hopefully this answers your question. What is time series data? That is time series data in under five minutes.